Several key primary elections are underway in Alaska and Wyoming. Wyoming features one of the most highly anticipated elections of the day. Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney, an outspoken critic of former President Trump, is down in the polls. She is expected to lose her race against the Trump-backed candidate Harriet Hageman. In Alaska, former Republican Governor Sarah Palin is running in the state's special election as she looks to revitalize her political career. She is hoping to claim the U.S. House seat that previously belonged to the late Congressman Don Young. Let's bring in Antoine Seawright and Joe Watkins now for more on this. Antoine is a CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist. And Joe is a former aide to President George H.W. Bush and host of Joe Watkins' State of Independence on Lighthouse TV. Antoine and Joe, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Joe, let me begin with you. Uh, as we mentioned, Congresswoman Cheney will likely face defeat in the Wyoming GOP primary. What would a loss there suggest about her place within the Republican Party? Well, uh, of course, Wyoming is probably the most Republican state in the country. Uh, uh, I think uh, the polls uh, and the, the, the data would bear that out. Uh, and she's likely to lose in this race. She's uh, the, the most recent polls I've seen show it down by, by 20, 20 points. That's going to be pretty hard to make up. Uh, so she's likely going to lose tonight uh, in this primary. But uh, I, I think she'll set her sights on perhaps national ambitions. Maybe she, uh, given the landscape as we head toward 2024, uh, might want to think about the possibility of running for the, the presidency, uh, given the fact that she has significant favorability among Democrats. Um, even in her home state of Wyoming, she's at 60 percent favorability with Democrats. So it's something that she might think about uh, going forward. Uh, and Antoine, I want to turn to you now. Uh, Cheney is the vice chair of the January 6th House Select Committee and one of the Republican Party's most outspoken critics of former President Trump. So how would her defeat impact the committee moving forward? Well, it's, it'd be one thing if it was just Liz Cheney, but she is the daughter of the former vice president of the United States. So that, I think, gives true clarity around who the modern-day Republican Party has become, a party of election deniers, insurrection supporters, and a party who has wrapped their arms around the most extreme policy positions uh, in play, uh, probably in my generation. So I think that sets the tone for tonight. Uh, as it relates to the January 6th piece, I can see Liz Cheney in this moment to be a patriot. And you, you hear that from a Democrat who probably disagrees with her over 90% of the time. But here's what I know and here's what the country knows from her work. Uh, I judge people on their deeds, not necessarily their words. She has really been about holding this president and those around him accountable for their actions around January 6th. And, and I think there's something to be said around that because very few people in her party has adopted that same posture. And the sad part about it, this is a representative in the Congress who's voted with this president 90 percent of the time, yet she finds herself going to lo likely lose tonight in a primary that should be a runaway election for someone who, like her, who puts her country over her political party. Antoine, I also want to ask about incumbent Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski. She's one of seven Senate Republicans who voted in favor of impeaching former President Trump. She's also the front runner in a crowded primary field. What would a victory for Senator Murkowski really mean as we look ahead to November, Antoine? Well, I think it's further proof that different strokes, different folks, different races, different places, um, the posture, the tone, and the tenor is different. Uh, I don't know if Murkowski could win in Wyoming, uh, but I do believe that Cheney could win uh, in Alaska. Uh, I think the victory for her will demonstrate to the public that you can work across the aisle, as she has done on a few occasions, to get things done. And the people back at home who know you best can, and in some cases, will reward you. Uh, and I think that will be the defining story of tonight if she were to be re-elected successfully in Alaska tonight. Uh, and, and I want to turn to another race. Former Alaska governor and Republican vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin is in the special election tonight. She's hoping to fill the vacant seat of the late Congressman Don Young. Joe, do you expect Palin to win tonight? And if so, does she have the political backing to do it again come November? Well, well, Alaska is a very independent state, uh, but at the same time, they recently went to a ranked voting system, which is very different from what the rest of the country has. So uh, this is a, a voting system that allows for uh, you to come in first, second, third, or fourth. 
In this case, she's running against another Republican, Nick Begich, who's uh, very popular as well. And it's likely that the two of them, uh, from everything that I've read, uh, will split the vote, uh, which will give the Democrat uh, a chance to win that House seat. And that's Alaska's only House seat. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an important seat. Uh, but uh, given the fact that uh, they have this ranked voting system, and likewise, given the fact that Sarah Palin is locked in a very, very tight battle with another Republican, uh, they'll likely uh, elect a Democrat tonight. Right, a lot of storylines to yeah, follow this I evening. Indeed. Antoine Seawright, Joe Watkins, thank you both very much. We appreciate it. Thanks so much.